The infinite universe when and how did this universe come into being? Also, how did the earth that we now inhabit come to be, and when were the various creatures of the earth born? And what kind of imprints has humanity left? These have been the questions that mankind has pondered while gazing up at the night sky. And humanity's curiosity became the foundation for understanding and developing the world. Today, I'd like to discuss the grand story that has unfolded from the beginning of time until now. In the beginning, 13.8 billion years ago, there was a small dot. This dot eventually explodes, and the Big Bang begins. After the Big Bang. Between, 50 to the 37 power, seconds and, 10 minus 32 power, seconds, the universe. It grew nearly 10 to the 50th power, and at this time, the universe was in a plasma state in which small elementary particles roamed freely. According to scientists, holding the universe in your hand at the time would be equivalent to holding 25 elephants. However, the universe experiences a dark age until 400 million years after the Big Bang. This is due to the fact that stars had not yet formed. However, after 400 million years, a nuclear fusion reaction occurred in which the hydrogens in the dust coalesced and turned into helium. Out of the dark ages, stars twinkled everywhere in the universe, and in some spaces, stars and surrounding gas were bound together by gravity, forming clusters of stars, and this is the galaxy. Indeed, the birth of a star is a significant event. It's because we're all descended from this star. Hydrogen and helium were the only elements in space during the early days of the Big Bang, but as stars were formed through the nuclear fusion reaction of hydrogen, helium returned to carbon at high temperatures, and oxygen, silicon, and iron were thought of through various nuclear fusion reactions. When the dead star collapsed billions of years later, the elements it produced were sprayed into space. The planet Earth and life were created from these elements, and we are all descended from the stars. Who would have thought life that will reveal the secret of the universe's birth will emerge from the sun, which was created long after the universe was born, and from the Earth's orbit around the sun. Our galaxy did not form until approximately 9 billion years after the Big Bang. Around this time, a small star known as the Sun formed in one of Orion's corners. As the gas and dust left over from making the Sun came together again, more than 10 billion small planets were created around the Sun, and the Earth was also one for two weeks. This small block of stone continued to collide with the surrounding planets and coalesce, finally becoming the present Earth. The newborn Earth was close to a fireball, but as planetary collisions subsided, the lighter and heavier elements gradually sank to the bottom to become the nucleus, and the lighter elements rose upward to form the mantle. On the surface, magma solidified to form primitive crust. And as the Earth cooled, the water vapor in the atmosphere fell as rain, creating rivers and seas. However, unlike now, there was no green light on the primitive Earth, and the sea was also full of darkness. Then, about 3.8 billion years ago, a dramatic event occurred. Many organic molecules in the Earth's oceans became proteins by attracting each other through chemical reactions, and these proteins sometimes moved in two and started self-replication. The protein was then surrounded by a bubble-like membrane and transformed into a primitive cell with a cell membrane. These replicated by attracting RNA molecules, which are required for self-replication, into the cell membrane. Following that, primitive cells that used DNA, which is more stable than RNA, appeared and rapidly multiplied. After about 1.8 billion years, giant cells engulfed other primitive cells and lived in symbiosis. It was a cell with eukaryotic characteristics. The one that ate the cell that produces energy from the compound evolved into an animal cell, while the one that ate the cell that photosynthesizes with light evolved into a plant cell. Despite the appearance of true cells, the Earth's oceans have been calm for billions of years. Because only a few very simple multicellular organisms existed. They are known as Ediacaran fauna. Then, about 540 million years ago, another major event occurs in the sea. The Cambrian explosion occurred in less than 10 million years and resulted in the biota increasing from about 3 phylums to a whopping 38 phylums. Anomalocaris, Opabinia, Hallucigenia, and other organisms appeared, as did the ancestor of all vertebrates. Some scientists believe that the appearance of I is the cause of this explosion of life. 
It is argued that the emergence of organisms with light-detecting organs in early Cambodia triggered a competitive system in the ecosystem. Primitive hunters began to catch and eat nutritious creatures rather than organic matter floating in the sea. It has become more diverse with the addition of hittable fins. The Earth's history begins with the Cambrian and continues through the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic, and geological eras that we are familiar with. Trilobites thrived in the Paleozoic seas, and fish with spinal cords first appeared. And it wasn't until 390 million years ago that some of them made their way up to the great land known as Pangaea and evolved into the first terrestrial vertebrates. It took place 13.4 billion years after the Big Bang. On the other hand, during the Paleozoic era, ferns such as ferns advanced on land and formed massive forests, and giant insects flourished. The plants that thrived at the time die and are buried in the ground, eventually becoming the coal we know today. In any case, the Paleozoic era, during which numerous creatures inhabited the sea and land, ends with a mass extinction caused by a large-scale volcanic eruption about 225 million years ago. It was a massive extinction event that wiped out 95% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates. However, life began to sprout on Earth again as if it had happened before. In the sea, ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs thrive, dinosaurs on land, and pterosaurs in the sky, and the Mesozoic Earth is about to enter the reptile era. At the same time, gymnosperms such as ginkgo trees and pine trees flourished, and by the end of the Mesozoic era, angiosperms that bloomed flowers had established themselves. Of course, mammals like rodents existed, but they were barely able to survive in the shadow of dinosaurs. On the other hand, the Earth's environment has changed as much as life. People gathered as we entered the Mesozoic era. As different regions such as polar forests and grasslands formed, continents moved further apart, and the Earth became a more colorful planet. However, an asteroid with a diameter of about 10 kilometers fell off the Yucatan Peninsula of modern-day Mexico about 65 million years ago. It was the equivalent of simultaneously detonating 170 hydrogen bombs. At the impact site, a crater with a diameter of 170 kilometers was formed, and massive earthquakes, tidal waves, and volcanic eruptions occurred in the surrounding area. As a result, the Earth became cloudy, and plants that had been deprived of sunlight for months began to die. Herbivorous dinosaurs died as a result of death in the newspaper, which led to the extinction of carnivorous dinosaurs. An asteroid that fell so suddenly killed 75% of Earth's species at the time. However, because of this extinction, the era of mammals on Earth is now open. Mammals, which had been hiding in the ground because they were smaller than dinosaurs, seized the opportunity and quickly filled the gap left by the dinosaurs. It has evolved in an unimaginable range over 10 million years, from small mice to primitive whales, bats, and carnivorous cats. And here are the primate ancestors to whom we are related. Over tens of millions of years, primates evolved and diversified into various species. A species that came down from the trees and walked on two legs appeared about four to five million years ago, and it was our ancestors. Early humans, Australopithecus afarensis, first appeared in Africa. Walking on two feet freed both hands, and as a result, Homo habilis, which made tools with their hands, appeared around 2.3 million years ago. Furthermore, 1.8 million years ago, Homo erectus cooked food over fire, and the jaw muscles required for chewing hard food gradually decreased in the skull. As a result of this, space was created for the brain to grow, and the brain capacity of Homo sapiens, which appeared around 200,000 years ago, was four times that of early humans. Homo sapiens, endowed with such a large brain, has spread throughout the world due to its superior intelligence to that of other animals. It spread because it was a good word, and it had to move indefinitely in search of food and a suitable habitat. However, agriculture was responsible for an epoch making change in human society around 10,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, who settled in one location and learned to grow crops, build dwellings, villages, and began raising livestock. Surplus products accumulated in the village as a result of this, and as a result, various occupational groups such as potters and merchants, priests and soldiers, as well as farmers, appeared in the village, resulting in the birth of an ancient nation, a civilized society. 
When I think of ancient countries, I think of wars between countries to steal each other's land and resources. The country that won here grew into a massive country, and as the size of the middle country grew, new fields such as science, engineering, and the arts began to emerge within it. Science, in particular, has led humanity down the path of innovation. Curiosity about the Earth and the universe led to the discovery of countless physical laws, curiosity about materials led to the discovery of chemical laws, and curiosity about life led to the development of countless medical technologies. Following agriculture, human society was able to transform into an industrial society based on this science and technology. We are the result of a history that began 13.8 billion years ago and ended with humans. From a cosmic standpoint, what we thought was history may have been a fleeting moment. Humans may also be insignificant creatures that arose by chance during the course of evolution. But in some ways, we are truly unique. We were constantly questioning ourselves as we looked up at the sky, and we are the only species so far to return to space using the rational tools of science. We stand on a 40-year physical and biological legacy. We walk on ancient seabeds where trilobites crawled, dinosaurs stomped over hills thick with ginkgo trees, and mammoths roamed frozen plains. It used to be their world, but now it's ours. The difference between us and the dinosaurs is that we can comprehend the past and predict the future. Our inherited world is ours, but it is also our responsibility. What happens next is entirely up to us. How about your think? It was an odd R-E-S-E-R-C-H that tells you about science you've been curious about at least once. If you enjoyed watching, please subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.